All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Wayne's World Garage. Today, we've got a project in the machine shop. Well, I don't know about the machine shop. We got a lathe and we got a Bridgeport mill. But here's what the story is. Check this out. So this thing here is called a fast collar. And it's from a Frick model Ott, not zero apparently, Ott. How do you spell it? O-U, anyway. A Frick model Ott sawmill that we run at the local, um, local place. So the way these things work is there's two of these. There's one fixed to a large mandrel, which is like six foot long, big piece of metal, kind of looks like this. Okay, and that's secured there and I can't get it off at all um, without taking the mandrel out. But this one here comes right off. And what you're supposed to do is, if you look at these, and there's all sorts of stuff on the interweb about this, this does not grab the saw, the saw being the blade, the 56 inch blade on this entire surface here. This is about a half inch surface. It grabs it just at this edge here, the tip of this thing here. Okay, that's what it's supposed to do. And then it's supposed to be at this center part about a four thousandths to six thousandths inch clearance, clearance. Okay, and the purpose of that is to allow the saw to flex. So when the saw flexes, okay, it goes in this indented area here and moves up and down on the mandrel, the round thing, and these two pins. That's the theory. But what happens is, after 3,000 hours use, because this thing's been used for like 20 years, okay, these here no longer have that small taper. All right, now we can take a look at that very carefully, and I, hopefully you can see this. You probably can't, but let me, um, let me help you out here. You can put a feeler gauge under here, which I've already done, but that's frankly a waste of time. So if you look under here, look under the edge of this thing here, and hopefully this will work. Hope it's not a plan, I know that. But you see there's no clearance whatsoever. I put the, the feeler gauge under there, and the 2000 feeler gauge is tight. And actually your eyes are a much better way of looking at this. So if you look under this collar, okay, where the light's shining on that flat surface, there's absolutely no gap. That's not the way it's supposed to be. So, so what are we gonna do, okay? Here, here's what I wanna do here, is I wanna take um, some metal, okay, this little round thing here. I've got some round stock, several pieces of round stock, and I wanna make this so I can mount this securely in my lathe. And when I put it in a lathe, when I put, when I put this in a lathe, I wanna be able to uh, machine this surface. Not smooth, but so that it's going in four to six thousandths of an inch. So that's what today's project is. I wanna get this done because tomorrow there's a local saw expert who's uh, gonna meet us at the sawmill and uh, give us some pointers with why we're cutting cockeyed wood. All right, so a quick look into the junk pile. I found some metal, which happens to be exactly two inch diameter and eight inches long. And if any of you live in the Baltimore area, Annapolis, Washington DC, Access Metals sells cutoffs like this at cheap. So a piece like this costs a couple bucks. Buy it new, you're gonna spend lots of money. Well, it turns out this opening here appears to be about two inches. How about that? It fits right on there perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing uh, my buddy um, John Clark did. And John drilled a hole in here, tapped it, put a bolt and a big washer on it to hold it on here after he machined the surface of this thing flat. So the first thing I'm gonna do is machine it flat. So I think to start with, I will make this a little bit small diameter. And after I make it a small diameter, it'll fit in a collet on the lathe. And it's just a, a, a better way of doing it. So let me get cracking on that. All right, we had a minor technical failure with the audio. So I'll have to do a voiceover. So I'm using a three point chuck. And what I wanna do is I wanna turn this piece of metal down to one inch outer diameter. So it fits in a collet. The three point chuck's pretty good. Not as accurate as a collet on a lathe. Um, although it's probably good enough for a sawmill. So what I'm doing is I use a center drill here. Sorry for the shakiness. And the center drill finds the center of my piece of metal. So here I put the live tailstock center, which has a Morse taper in it, number seven Morse taper, into the tailstock of the lathe. And that holds this piece centered because I'm going to be putting a lot of forces on it and I don't want this thing flying out and whacking me. It's really critical to do that when you've got a smaller piece of metal. But this thing starts off at two inch diameter. I don't think it's going anywhere. Regardless, I want to hold it in really tightly. 
So this is going to be like watching glue dry for a while. So I'm going to speed this way up. And I got to apologize. Uh, Jared lent me this high dollar microphone, which I forgot to turn on. So that's why the voiceover is happening. All right. So what we're doing here is I'm taking off 50 thousandths of an inch at a time. So the lady, that's pretty easy to do. And if you look at these chips, they're not exactly chips, okay? They are kind of gold, and they should be bluish gold in that thing. And why are they gold, and why are they not the same color as a steel? Because they're getting hot. And that's exactly what I want. I want them to get hot, because when they get hot, they're taking heat away from the carbide and away from the metal. So that's on purpose. The good news is we're getting pretty close here. So the collet measures one inch inner diameter. So I want to cut this stock down to be exactly one inch. So I've already cut a whole bunch off of it and uh, it's getting close. So when I get close, I have been taking 50 thousandths inch cuts off, which takes off 0.1 inch diameter each time. So you can figure it out real quick, 10 passes, I'll take off one inch. But right now I'm really close. So what I'll do is I'll take out the the micrometer and I'll measure this thing and see how close I am and it turns out it's working out pretty well because this thing is spot on. so this is not meant to be a video of how to use a micrometer but this is accurate to within a thousandth of an inch and now I'm taking a collet and just putting it on here and making sure it fits so and it does fit as exactly as I wanted so I'm pretty excited here and then I'll take the lathe and I'll chamfer the edges just to make it nice so it doesn't cut my fingers all right, well now what you can see is I've taken off my three jaw chuck and I put the collet in a lathe. And again, the collet's a little bit more accurate than the three jaw chuck since I've got that piece turned down. Now what I've got to do is I've got to turn this thing down so it fits on the inside of the fast collar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down um, the outer diameter of this little bit and this will be perfectly round. And, and that's nice. The run out of this thing will be 0 0.00000 inches exactly right so i took some measurements can you hear that i took some measurements so this little lip here as you can see maybe you can't see it but there's a very small lip right here and that comes in 250 thousandths of an inch a quarter of an inch for you other people i don't know what you you know and this distance here is 1.560 and i can actually show you how i measured that it's not real critical Check that out, 1.560, somewhere in that range, but that's not that critical. So, so let me do this, um, 1.560 and then a quarter of an inch. So what I wanna do is I wanna machine this down to 1.560. So um, what are we at now? Just a rough number, I'd say we're close to two inches. Yeah, we're still at two inches. So let me crank away at this a little bit on the lathe. All right, so this lathe has this mechanical stop here, which I'm pointing to, works out pretty well. And it's accurate to a, like a tenth of a thousandth of an inch. So what I'll do is I'll measure um, this piece and I wanna go in 250 thousandths of an inch. This way I get it exactly right. It's not real hard and it's a, it's a good thing, but you gotta be careful of using the automatic feed on this thing because it'll yam in there. So you gotta stay awake and be on it all the time. All right, well that worked out pretty well. So. 1.560 or thereabouts and in a quarter of an inch for this little lip here you can see that fits right on there Ooh, is that nice and check this out it's flat in there just the way it's supposed to be so the next step now is I want to drill a hole and tap a hole in the center of this and make a big washer to go in here so I can crank it down snugly so that should be pretty straightforward right <laughs> um, I think what I will do now is drill and tap a hole so I can um, make sure I have that done and ready to go. Cause that's, this is looking pretty damn good actually. God, am I good. The nice thing here is this will square it up for my drill bit. So here's the dealio. Um, uh, if I'm gonna drill and tap one half 13, it requires a seven sixteenth inch drill. And I'll start with a smaller, I'll start with a three eighths, but I also use these stubby drills cause they're more, uh, they don't bend as much and they keep it going straighter. So that's what we're gonna do is we'll cut a three eighths, then we'll cut a little bit bigger. And uh, 
how far we're going to go. I'll go in about an inch or so. It's not really critical. And I'm probably going to turn this thing off because I like to give it a little bit of oil to make it happy camper. So let me get some oil on this. So I've got my 7 16th inch hole and I drilled it in about one and a quarter inches. And now I'm going to, you know, thread the piece of material uh, with this tap. And it's easy to use the lathe to get it centered and get it started straight. And once I get going, I can keep it straight. Oh, there you go. That's how that works. And now a little bit of lubrication and I will finish tapping this guy out. And I can't reach it with a camera in here, so you go off the air. Sorry, Jack. All right, so now I'm on the last operation and it's just making my washer like three quarters of an inch instead of two inches. So I've got this thing set up here and we can just crank it in 50 thousandths at a time and then we'll be done in no time. All right, well here we are. We've got this thing finished now and it worked out swimmingly well. So let me just show you what we have here. This is called the fast collar on a Frick sawmill. So this here holds the saw on. The saw is what we call the blade. The blade is what we call a saw. You know what I mean? It's six inches. And the goal here is I needed to make a jig so that I can put this on a lathe and taper this. Because this, from the outside edge here to this inside, which is maybe half an inch, is supposed to be tapered about four, five, six thousandths of an inch. So the blade is actually held on just at the very outer part of this collar. And unfortunately, I've got another collar on the other mandrel, which has to be done also. But now, um, I'll be in a position to machine this at least. So what I did is, you saw me making this piece here. I tapped it in the center, half inch 13 um, bolt. So that fits right in there, okay? And I wanna be able to put this in my lathe and have it centered with a collet, because a collet's just the best way of doing it. So what I did is machine that. Now that fits right here, swimmingly well. And then I put a little taper on this bad boy here, and this fits in perfectly here, just like that. Is that slick or what? And now you put your little bolt on there, crank this thing down with my unbelievable string on hands, no. And now I can put it in the uh, lathe and I can surface this the way it's supposed to be surfaced. So. That's today's project. Thanks for watching Wayne's World Garage. Hope you all like this. Um, this is for our sawmill, a Frick sawmill, model Ott, apparently, not zero Ott. Um, we normally run a 56 inch blade, but we're doing some work to get this thing back into good shape again so we can cut square wood instead of cockeyed wood. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and leave a comment. Subscribing is free. Take care, guys. Thank you.